So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can create a simple expense tracker in Notion. So here we have our simple expense tracker. So up here at the top, we have the accounts. So each of these cards represents one of the cards or the bank accounts that you currently have. Um, and on here, it will calculate automatically for you the total income into that account, the total expenses that have been paid from that account. And it will also show you the current balance of that card. So just below we have the expenses database. So this is where you'll input any of your expenses. So as you can see, you'll just make a note of what it was you actually paid for, the cost, the date. And in this column, you'll select which card or bank account this expense was paid from. So these two databases are connected together. So when you input an expense and you select the card that it was paid from, this will automatically update this card. So it will amend the balance and it will also be added onto your total expenses. Down at the bottom, we have the income database. So this works very similarly to the expense one. It's just for income. So you can input the name of your income, the amount, the date, and again, which card this was paid into. And similarly, um, anything that you put in this table will automatically amend the balances and the total income on the cards above. So this expense tracker is a really handy system and surprisingly, it's actually pretty easy to set up. So I'm gonna show you how to do it for yourself now. So the first thing we want to do is type in forward slash database and select this database inline option. We're going to give this a name. So I'm going to call this one accounts. I'm just going to call it one to make it different from the previous one. And I'm just going to hide this database title. I'm also just going to quickly rename this and I will select an icon. I'm just going to delete a couple of these rows and I'm just going to delete this tags option because we don't need it. So the first thing I'm going to do is add in all of the bank accounts that I currently have. So I'm going to start with a debit card and I'll also add in a credit card. So make sure you add every single bank account that you currently use. Um, feel free to, instead of naming it debit card, you could name it the name of the bank that you use, whatever works best for you. So once you've added all your cards, we're going to click on this little plus button here and add a new property. The first one we're going to add is a number. So if you just type in number and select this number property. So we're going to give this a name of starting balance. And the first thing I'm going to do is change this number format here from number to my currency. So you can select any currency here, whichever one is obviously appropriate. I'm just going to select US dollar for this example. So in here, we're going to put in the starting balance of these cards. So it's essentially whatever the balance of that card is currently today. That's what you want to write in here. So I'm just going to, as an example, put 3,500. And for something that's a negative balance, like a credit card, you may be a negative. You can just put that in. So type in minus, let's just say $1,000 like that. Just going to make that a little smaller. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is just below, we're going to add in our next database. So I'm going to add forward slash database and select database in line. This one is going to be our expenses. So I'm just going to type in expenses one and just hide this title. I'm also just going to rename this column here as expenses and select an icon. So I'm going to select a down arrow to show that it's money leaving my account. And again, I'm just going to delete these two rows and remove the tags column. So the first thing we want to do is add another property um, and this one is going to be a number property. So type in number. So I'm going to rename this one amount because this is where we're going to type in the amount of the expense. Again, under number format, I'm just going to change that to my currency. So I'm going to select US dollar. Then I'm just going to add another property by clicking this plus and this one is going to be the date. So this is just going to record obviously which date that expense was paid on. I'm just going to leave the settings the same. So I'm going to start by adding in my first expense. So let's just say that I paid my rent and you can just put in the amount. Let's just say $900 and select the date. I'll just select today. Now I'm going to add in the database for the income. So I'm going to type in forward slash database and select database in line. This one is going to be for income. Again, I'm just going to hide the title and rename this column here. So for this one, I've selected the up arrow to show that it's money coming into my account. And again, I'm just going to delete these rows and remove this column. Okay, so next we're going to add another property and this one is going to be a number property. And this one is for the amount. So I'm just going to type in amount and again, just change that number format to your currency. Then I'm also going to add another property, which is date. So we can select which day that income came in. I'm just going to leave the settings the same. So this is what we currently have. So I'm just going to add in an example income here. Let's just say I receive my paycheck 
and let's just put it as $2,000 and I'll select the date as today as well. So now we kind of have a semi-functional expense tracker. You can actually record your expenses and your income, um, but we need to connect it up to this accounts database so that we can see our current balances and see the total amount that we've either spent or received into the accounts. So the way that we do that is using a relation property. So I'm gonna add another property on the expenses column by clicking this plus, and I'm gonna type in relation and click on this relation property. So next it's gonna ask me which database I want to link to. So in this case, I want to link the expenses database up to the accounts. So I'm gonna select the accounts database. So it's gonna bring up a couple of options. So here it just correctly states that I'm relating to the accounts, which is correct, that's what I want. So I'm gonna keep the limit of no limit because I want it to record every single expense that I input into my expenses table. I don't want there to be a limit. And it will ask me, do I want to show this on the accounts database? So in this case I do, so I'm just gonna select that and turn it on. So I'm happy with those settings, so I'm gonna click add relation. So now, as you can see, if we look here in the expenses table, a new column has appeared for our accounts. And if I look up in accounts, a new column has appeared for expenses. So that's showing that these two databases have been correctly linked together, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. Um, I want to do the same with the income database. So I also want that to be linked up to the account. So we're just gonna do the exact same thing here. We're gonna add another property, which is relation, select the database. So this one is our accounts database. So I'm just gonna check that I've linked it correctly to the right database, keep the limit as no limit. And I do want to also show this on our accounts database. So I'm just gonna click add relation. So as you can see, we've now added the accounts column to the income. And if I look here on accounts, we also have another column which has appeared for income, which is perfect. So if I look now at my expenses database, I'm actually gonna change the name of this from accounts to source account. So essentially this column is gonna serve as a selection for which bank account my rent was paid from. So if I click on this box, it will bring up all of the pages that are in my accounts database. Um, so essentially I can select which account I want to link this to. So this is my rent. So let's just say I paid my, my rent from my debit card. So I'm gonna click that. And as you can see, it's now added that into this box. And if I look up on accounts, it's now bringing up rent under the expenses column. Similarly, in the income column, I want to change the name of this from accounts to destination account. So this column is gonna serve as where I can select which account this paycheck was paid into. So if I click on this box, again, it's bringing up the accounts from our accounts database. So again, let's say that my income was paid into my debit card account. And if I just have a look up here at the accounts, as you can see, the paycheck is now appearing next to debit card, which is perfect. So every time that I add a new expense, it will appear in these boxes, depending on which card I've selected and whether it's an expense or income. So let's just add another one just to show you how that would work. So let's just say I paid for some groceries and it was a hundred dollars. And let's just say this time it was my credit card. So this time I've selected credit card. So as you can see, the groceries has now appeared next to the credit card. So it appears to be working, it's logging everything correctly, but rather than seeing the, just the names of the expenses or the income, I want to see the actual amounts. I want to know how much I've spent in total. So what we're gonna do next is up in accounts, we're gonna add another column, and this one is gonna be a roll up. So if you just type in roll up and click this button here, Essentially what a rollup does, it allows you to access a database that you're linked to and you can grab certain pieces of data that you want to use in this database. So our accounts database is related to our expenses database. So I want to grab a certain piece of data from that expenses database. So firstly, it's gonna ask me which relation I'm referring to. So in this case, I want to relate to my expenses database. So I'm gonna select that relation. Next, it's gonna ask me which property in the expenses database do you want to access? So in this case, it's gonna be the amount because I want to add all of those amounts together. So I'm gonna select amount. It's then gonna ask me what I want to calculate. So instead of show original, I actually want to add them all together. So if I select this sum, it's gonna sum all of the expenses together and show me a total, which is perfect. So I'll click sum. So this is the roll up that we just created. So it is bringing up $900 for the debit card, which is the total amount of expenses for the debit card and a hundred for the credit card. So just to show you how this number would change, I'm just gonna add another expense for the debit card. So let's just say I paid for some gas and it was $65. I paid that today and I'm gonna select debit card as the source account. 
So if you look here under this roll up, this was $900, but it's just updated to 965 because I've added the gas bill on there. So that's perfect. It is correctly adding all of my expenses together. So I'm just going to change the name of this to total expenses. Okay, so I also want to do the exact same thing for the income. So I want it to add together all of my total income um, for each different account. So we're going to add another property to accounts. And again, it's going to be a roll up. So it's going to ask me which relation I want to use. So in this case, we want to grab some data from the income database. So I'll select income. Again, it's asking me the property. So I want to access the amount so that I can add them all together. And we want to calculate the sum. So I'll select sum. So this one I'm going to rename as total income. And as you can see here, it's bringing through the total income was $2,000 and that's for my debit card. And that's correct. That is the only income that I've added here. So the final thing that I want to add to my accounts database is a current balance column. So I want it to be able to show me what my current balance is. So let's add another property here. And this time it's going to be a formula. So I'm going to label this one balance and I'm just going to click on this formula edit button, which is going to bring up this little panel, which is where we're actually going to type in our formula. So it's actually quite a simple formula. So you can see the properties here that are in the database. So I'm going to start with the starting balance, which is what was the money that was originally in the account. And we're going to add on the total income and we're going to minus the total expenses. So I say it's quite a simple formula. It's just our starting balance, add any income minus any expenses. And then I'm just going to click done. I also just need to change the number format here to US dollar and that's it. So if I now look back at the table, as you can see here, it's now bringing up the current balance. So our starting balance was 3,500. We added $2,000 and we minus 965. So that correctly gives $4,535. So the final thing I want to do with this is I want to make it look a little bit better. Currently, it's a little bit ugly. There's a lot of random uh, columns here that we don't really need. So if you remember at the start, we had this view. So this is quite an aesthetic and easy way to view the data. So let's see how we can change this table into that view. So the first thing we're going to do is add some labels. So on this one, as you can see, it's got these little labels that say income, expenses, balance. So let's go back to the example and add those on. So we're going to add these on as properties. So I'm going to click here and add another the property this one is going to be a text property and I'm going to label this one balance label so in this column I'm just going to type the word balance because that's what I want the label to be um, I'm also just going to change the color so if you highlight the word and select this little a here it will let you change the color so I'm just going to change it to gray so this is just so it stands out a little bit um, beside the actual numbers I want that to appear in every row so if I click on here and just click this drag it will drag it to each row I'm then going to add another one. So I'm also going to add another text property. And this one is going to be our income label. And in this one, we're going to just write the word income. Again, I'm just going to highlight this and change the color to gray. And I'm just going to drag that into all of the rows. Just going to add one more. So again, text property. And this one is going to be our expense label. So in this one, I'm just going to write expenses and just change it to gray as well and drag it into all columns. So now that we've got our labels, I'm actually gonna change this from a table into a gallery view. So to be able to do that, we're gonna click on these three little dots here and under layout, I'm just gonna click on there and it's currently a table, but I want it to be a gallery. So I'll select gallery. The first thing I want to do is I wanna remove all this white space here. So under card preview, I'm just gonna select none. So next I want to show the labels and the actual income and outgoings. So the way we do that is we click on properties so these are all the different properties in our table. So I'm going to use this little button here to select which ones I want to show up on the card. So firstly, I'm going to select all my labels. So I want my balance label, my expense label and the income label. And I think I'm going to have the balance at the bottom, the expense at the top. So it's income, expense, balance, completely up to you which order you want to do them in. Then I want to add our balance, which is this one. I want to add the total expenses and the total income and then just going to move these so that they're in the correct places. So the total expenses needs to go under the expense label and the total income needs to go under the income label. So it should be your label, then the actual property. Um, so just have a look here and make sure they all match up. So there you go. Now that we've done that, it is showing up on the cards. The final thing you can do just to make it a little bit more aesthetic, if you just click on the card 
and hover up here you can add an icon so you can just add something like a card like this one so I'm just going to add that on here as well so it just makes it a little bit more um, aesthetically pleasing and there is our simple expense and income tracker so just to show you how it works again I'm just going to add another one in here just to show that it will update on here so for example let's say I bought some new shoes and they were $60 select the date and let's say I paid this from my debit card so once I've clicked that it's updated our expenses and it's also amended the balance let's just add another income so let's just say I got a payment from YouTube for $400 and that again went to my debit card. So as you can see, it's updated the income and it's also updated the balance again. So this one is quite a simple expense tracker, but you can create some really advanced expense trackers using Notion. I'm gonna show you a quick example now. Okay, so I just wanted to show you an example of a finance tracker that is a lot more advanced than the one that I've currently showed you how to make. So this is my finance tracker. I spent like a week of my life creating this tracker. So it is really advanced and there is a lot of features on here. Um, so firstly, we have this account overview. So this is very similar to the overview um, that I just showed you how to create. Um, so we've got various different um, categories here, but you've also can include things like loans or student loans on here or your mortgage. And this one is currently set to a monthly view. So this will only show you the outgoings and incoming uh, for the current month, which is really useful. Um, on this one, I've got this handy little table to add income, expenses or transfers. Um, so in this example, you can actually transfer money between accounts using the transfer setting, which again is something that a more simple um, expense tracker wouldn't be able to do. So just as an example, I'll show you how this would work using an expense. So if I put on here, I had dinner with my friends. Firstly, select a time period. So this links up to a yearly report that I've also created, which will show you an overview of each month of the year and how much money you spent each month. Then select the date. I'm gonna say the expense was $70. Select the source account. So I'm just gonna select this debit card. In this one, we have various different expense categories. So you can view your expenses, how much you've spent uh, by category, which is really handy. So this one is gonna be eating out. So that will, as I say, automatically update this account balance up here. And I also have a transaction report here, which will show an overview of all your transactions, how much they were for, and if it was either an income expense or a transfer. Another really cool feature of this expense tracker is the budget tracker. So every single month you can set a budget for each category of expenses. Um, and on this page, it will show you an overview of each category, your budget and your current or actual spend in that category. It will tell you if you're on budget or if you overspend, like in this example, it will tell you that you've overspent. So again, it's a really handy feature to help you keep on track um, to help avoid overspending um, and it's just really nice to be able to see an overview of what you've actually spent versus your budget. Another really cool feature that I've added is this subscription tracker. So this is a great way to keep track of all those subscriptions that we all have. So on here, it'll show you the monthly cost and the annual cost. So you only need to input the amount that you paid um, and the template will work out the monthly or the annual cost for you. And you can also track a bill. So here is the bill tracker. So this will automatically update you um, whenever a bill is due. So as you can see, this one is overdue. So it's telling you that you've missed the deadline. It's now an overdue bill. And when your bill is within two weeks, it will automatically tell you on here um, when the payment date is. I also have an investment tracker for anyone that has investments. So on this little overview, it will show you the total amount that you've invested, the current value of your investment, and it will work out automatically the percentage change. So whether you're up and down and by how much. So that's just a really quick overview of my finance tracker. I also have tons of other amazing things in here like transaction reports, a yearly report and a net worth report. So it will automatically work out your current net worth. Um, this template is available for purchase on my Etsy store. So if you're interested in this one at all, um, I'll leave the link in the description box below where you can purchase this. But I just wanted to use this one as an example to show you the capabilities of Notion, especially when it comes to finance trackers. There is so much that you can do. The possibilities are really endless and that's it thank you so much for watching this video if you found it useful please like and subscribe you can also check out my pre-made notion templates on my etsy store and i'll leave the link to that in the description below